Hello and welcome. Uh, it's a special edition of the News Watch this evening and we are joined by a special guest, someone who's been in the line of fire from Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. I'm joined by Lieutenant Governor of Delhi, Najib Jang. Mr. Jang, uh, you seem to have won this round of the war between yourself and the Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. The Delhi High Court has uh, ruled in your favor. But let me not get into the clauses uh, 3, uh, Article 239AA of the Constitution. Let me just get to the fact of perception. And people of Delhi perceived that there was a huge war between the Lieutenant Governor and the Chief Minister of Delhi. Do you think that war will come to an end now? The possession was caused by the behavior of one side. We believe that we have followed the constitution to the T, we have faith in the constitution and therefore throughout this last one and a half year, we have abided and followed the constitution, conventions, rules, extant rules and so on uh, without compromise. That unfortunately was at times not uh, acceptable to the elected government. Uh, we had to enforce the law. Uh, but Mr. Jung, there were times when there were two Home Secretaries that had been appointed, one by you and one by the Delhi Chief Minister. There were two uh, anti-corruption bureau chiefs uh, uh, and, and, you know, so many appointments that have raised eyebrows. How does this all get resolved now? Do you have the power to appoint these officers or does Arvind Kejriwal as Chief Minister of Delhi have the powers to appoint these officers? Wasn't it all too childish to have uh, all this happening? The powers of the Chief Minister are clear to Mr. Kejriwal from day one. The Home Secretaries have always been appointed by the Lieutenant Governor. The Anti-Corruption Bureau Chiefs have always been appointed by the Lieutenant Governor. Of course, uh, prior to a year and a half, the Chief Minister requested the Lieutenant Governor to give a uh, to give a panel from whom the ACB chief could be selected and we used to do that. We found now that there was no need to do it and so we appointed an anti-corruption chief. But uh, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal says that you are standing in the way of their battle against corruption. How do you respond to that? I don't understand that at all. I mean the anti-corruption bureau exists. Uh, they are functioning effectively. They are functioning seriously. So I do not know how we stand against the battle. Uh, Mr. Kejriwal did believe that the fiat of the Anti-Corruption Bureau should, uh, should go up to central government officials. The High Court has clarified our stand, which is that the Anti-Corruption Bureau of the Delhi government uh, is meant only for Delhi government officials. So we do not intrude on the authority of the central government. The CBI and so on looks after that. Uh, Mr. Jung, you're saying that your interpretation of the constitution, it's almost as if saying that you work constitutionally, but whatever Arvind Kejriwal does is unconstitutional. Is that what you're alluding to? What I am saying is that I have not, uh, I have not deferred from the constitutional line even to a comma. So what has been stopped was violative of the constitution. So Arvind Kejriwal was putting up files to you that were unconstitutional? There are several files which we believed uh, could have been dealt with differently and more carefully. We stopped them, we sent them back with advice. Sometimes it was followed, sometimes it was not. And what was not constitutional was declared either non est by us, and today it has been declared non est by the High Court. So please you're understand saying... one thing. Please understand one thing that all the issues raised by the Kejriwal government have been declared as wrong by the Delhi High Court today. So all you... issues, not one, all issues. So you're saying that everything that Arvind Kejriwal has proposed was unconstitutional. What would you attribute this, his uh, uh, experience or lack of it uh, in running governments or is he deliberately doing uh, these orders because he wants to run things his way? I wish he had listened to me. I, uh, I advised him on several times that the sanctity of the constitution has to be preserved. It is a very, very sacred document. We cannot play with it. Uh, unfortunately, there have been cases where uh, constitution was dealt with lightly and we stopped it. Which were the cases where you're saying that Arvind Kejriwal, you're, you're refraining from using the word unconstitutional. Are you saying there were cases that were unconstitutional that Arvind Kejriwal sent to you? No, look, unconstitutional means a very larger issue. Single issues mean that provisions of the constitution are being violated. For instance, I will tell you, um, there is this uh, circle rates business in agricultural areas. A file had come to us uh, and, the and the Delhi government fixed the circle rates. 
they should have sent the file for notification to me. It, it was not done. We called for the file because there is a provision um, in the transaction of business rules that we can summon files. When we summoned file, we found that there were a large, large number of lacunae or irregularities. We suggested to them that, look, you better remove them, which they did not do. And when they did not do, we declared it non-est or the commissions of inquiry. Now, both of them have been declared illegal by the High Court. Uh, they, he, uh, the Delhi government does not have the legal sanctity to set up a commission of inquiry under the uh, Commission of Inquiries Act 1952. It has been clarified to them by the Delhi High Court. We told them several times. Uh, that brings me to the real question. Was this entire fight about the Commission of Inquiry on the DDCA incident? Apart from this, of course, uh, the CNG uh, uh, validity uh, Commission of Inquiry is also there. But these two commissions of inquiries, was the war between the LG's office and Arvind Kejriwal a result of the setting up of this uh, Commission of Inquiry? And the allegation against you is that you especially intervened in the DDCA matter because you work for your of political bosses and in this case finance minister Arun Jaitley was said to be one of them I had nothing to do with the DDCA matter all we said was that uh, was that you cannot set up an inquiry that entire process of setting up the inquiry was malefied uh, yes it was a malefied act and I will tell you why three officers were deputed to to do an inquiry into the DDCA in three days, is it humanly possible to do a detailed inquiry in three days? And there are emails, I am told, uh, from, from people belonging to the Ahmadmi party to the officer who conducted that inquiry of how the inquiry should go. Now, that's extremely serious. So, all I am trying to say, say... I am told. Do you have proof? No, I'm told this is what the gossip is. I've not seen the papers. I've not even seen that but inquiry But how can report. you how can you call it malafide on the basis of gossip? Why I'm saying is that you can't complete any inquiry in three days' time. An inquiry takes a month's time because there are details that you have to go into. You can't do that. So what I'm trying to say is that the commissions of inquiry could have been set up properly. If the might matter had been processed, it could have been sent to us. We would have examined the law and whether you can inquire into the DDCA matters or not inquire to the DDCA matters. After all, it comes under the Companies Act. All that should have been examined. Uh, the Delhi government and Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia has reacted to your statements in the press conference that you made uh, just a short while ago. And he has said that Delhi is different UT. It's a different union territory. It is a union territory where there is an elected legislature. And in this case, 67 of the entire MLAs in the Delhi Assembly belong to one particular political party, that is the Aam Admi Party. With all due respect to Mr. Sasodia's interpretation, he should read the order that has been issued by the High Court because that issue has been addressed at length by the Delhi High Court, number one. Number two, we must respect and we should respect the 67 number. Having said that, there are eight MPs in Delhi who have been duly elected by the people of Delhi. There are three municipal committees in Delhi that have been elected by the people of Delhi. They don't belong to the Ahmadmi party. So this elected business, we shouldn't exaggerate it. We should look at the constitutional provision of what a union territory with legislature is. And because you said you don't want to go into 239AA, I would strongly advise you to look at 239AA, which deals with uh, union territories with legislatures and that would clarify the entire constitutional position as it exists today and indeed I am sure because they are going to the Supreme Court I remain confident that they have no case. Are you questioning the basic intelligence of Arvind Kejriwal? He would have gone through section 290, uh, 239AA as well. Who so I question his intelligence. I'm sure he's more clever than I am. Having said that his interpretation of 239AA is laughable. The question is also at this point of time that Arvind Kejriwal not only through his tweets but through a letter written to you specifically has said and let me quote from this letter. He says that uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi would not make you the Vice President of India regardless of how many orders he takes from Prime Minister Modi. How do you respond to a letter that has the been written? The letter found its place in my face paper basket. 
that's the answer you don't like to re- react and respond to arvind kejriwal why would i react to such a letter no, but in, in general when he talks about you on his uh, tweets he's uh, tweeted and let me just go through in the city of delhi uh, lieutenant governor and modi ji have failed miserably he's called uh, modi ji a psychopath he's called you some names uh, on his uh, tweets uh, in the past how do you react to these kind of uh, tweets and uh, insinuations by arvind kejriwal i feel sorry for him why would you feel sorry for him he's a because popularly shows, elected government and in a democracy it shows, because it shows a paranoia which is which is really of concern he should mature uh letter writing is much more serious business you actually letters are kept uh, for historical records right letters exchanged between chief ministers and governors or chief ministers and prime ministers are sacred documents for history as time passes people will research these papers it does not reflect well on the chief minister of delhi to use that language but arvind kejriwal seems to be confident that he'll uh, increase his power from here and he is going on to other states like punjab where people say he is very popular and he might even uh, win the elections uh, sure the people of punjab are watching and i'm sure the people of punjab will be reading this judgment in due course they will make up their they will make up their you know fracas between the lg's office and the chief minister's office began with shakuntala gamlin and her temporary appointment as the delhi chief secretary do you think the appointment of a temporary officer of a delhi chief secretary should have been blown into such a huge row between the lg's office and the chief minister's office i'm i'm very happy you asked that question because that issue really really pained me because um, it it devolved into personal attacks on a very capable lady officer uh the details are very interesting uh, i think kk sharma the chief secretary was going on a course maybe for 6 or 7 days and so a file came to me uh, which had five names uh, five type names the senior most was shakuntala and then there were other five and they had a last name of another officer who had actually not even joined the delhi government he had he had come in to, to delhi but he had not even joined the government and so uh, the file said that we want this six man this ka naam tha paripal rai well and uh, i wrote in the file that the convention is that uh, for such short periods we post the senior most person number 1 shakuntara was then the power secretary she was also holding charge of uh, chairman ndmc she has an outstanding record she is chief secretary arunachal today uh, so i recorded on file that she is the senior most and she is absolutely capable and i see no reason for a period of 6 months she should not be acting chief secretary and so we made her chief secretary uh, it was it was extremely unfortunate that uh, the chief minister the following day uh, in a in a in a public meeting before uh, national television uh, called her dishonest Uh, it it is a painful saga in the in the career of a of an officer albeit a lady officer who has risen to the uh, to be god willing future secretary to government of india i i am still pained and sorry for it but uh, he is called her dishonest he makes such statements about several cabinet ministers he makes these statements about others he is also called you names how do you respond to all of that coming from arvind kejriwal i have stopped reacting i mean i feel sorry that's all i can feel i have met him several times he has met me uh, in a civil manner so i don't know why uh, behind my back um, he should be saying all this i mean the words that have been used uh, for the honorable prime minister of india uh, it's it's highly inappropriate those words have been used when the prime minister was abroad Now the stature of a prime minister uh, is is far ahead from the stature of a chief minister of a union territory. But leave that apart. We are all human beings, and and words cannot be used loosely. So I am concerned, and uh, I feel sorry for this whole incident. Uh, there is also the question of M M Khan, the N D M C officer. who was killed under mysterious circumstances now the uh, allegation against you at that time was that uh, arvind kejriwal said you had been actually abetting his murder 
uh, that was what it was tantamount to and the fact that uh, M.M. Khan uh, was being hounded by a BJP MP and uh, you know you were playing hand in glove with him forwarding the complaints of that particular MP uh, you know further and acting against M.M. Khan who was perceived to be an honest officer in this entire uh, case yeah. of uh, the hotel uh, that was uh, involved. While all this is very laughable and we can laugh in better times, uh, may I explain the details of this? Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, the uh, Mr. Giri, who is who's an MP, had come uh, with a letter uh, from this hotel person that uh, uh, this, this man is being, being harassed. And so, look at the matter. So, we sent off the, the, the whole letter with the bundle from this hotelier to NDMC for examination. And then the next day, the, the hotelier left another bundle in my office saying that please be an arbitrator into this matter because I am being hounded by a gentleman called Khan. So again, which happens and which is routine, that uh, this whole bundle was again sent off to NDMC uh, for, for looking into it. And uh, next we find out is that uh, Khan has been killed. I think in 24 hours the police had, had got eight or nine people, I think nine people have been arrested including the hotelier. Neither Mr. Giri nor I were responsible, I mean hundreds of people go to MPs and they you know forward their cases. This was a letter which came to my office, we sent it off. This was after uh, the murder of M.M. Khan? Yeah, well, this is very interesting because the letter comes to us one day and we send it because the office takes process time processing it, we sent it for the next day and in that in the intervening period Khan was killed. We did not know that Khan had been killed. In which Khan is killed, where we don't keep a track of. But you're in charge of the administration of Delhi. That doesn't That's mean what brings me back to the same yes. question. Yeah. Mr. Arvind Kejriwal says, when there is a rape in Delhi, he as the chief minister has to respond. Now, very recently, there has been a rape in Delhi where a girl has been forced to drink acid. There's another case where the lower uh, part of a girl's body has been burnt so that the rape can't be found out. Who should people of Delhi ask for answers to these questions? I think all of us are very, very sorry and uh, substantially responsible. Every, every uh, rape, any incident on a female hurts us deeply. Unfortunately, what is happening in the matter of rapes, uh, statistically about 90 or 91 percent are within the profile, confines of home. So it's the uncles, the fathers, the brothers, the mamas, chachas who are doing this, the neighbors. Uh, the seven or eight percent which are outside and it shows an extremely sick mentality uh, of young men because if, uh, when we see the so statistic the administration of delhi has nothing to do with it they cannot intervene because no, these happen should. in the spaces of uh, people's own homes yes, when people no we can't i mean if somebody is uh, in the confines of his own home then you know you don't have eyes but to get there. But that's not the Gandhi Nagar case. That's not the no, case. No, so well, I'm coming to that. There are cases. It's a city. It's a very very large city, and rapes are happening. It's a very shocking thing. Uh, to the credit of Delhi police, uh, people are caught within 24 hours. But that doesn't take away the the, the grimness of the situation. We are all so very in concerned. Future, in future, when there are such incidents uh, in the city, should people of Delhi knock on the LG's door and will you be answerable to people or will Arvind Kejriwal be the only person we have to seek no, answers no, no, from? No, not at all. He is not responsible for law and order. Finally, it is, it is the Delhi police, the office of the LG and of course society as a whole. This, this will require a lot of education of people. We will have to look at the social infrastructure. We have to improve the economic uh, status of people. We have to improve this, the, the cheek and jowl living in small colonies of people. It will take time. But certainly uh, to, to blame the chief minister would be incorrect. How do you see Arvind Keshwal responding to this entire judgment of the courts? You said that he has in the past sent you unconstitutional orders. Now. What happens? Every order that Arvind Kejriwal has to give, including appointment of his own private secretary, Rajendra Kumar, and the fact that he's been caught in a corruption case, ironically, he's blamed even that on you. How do you respond to the allegation of Rajendra Kumar's case uh, that you intervened and you have been targeting the chief minister's office with the CBI raid? The chief minister's office was never targeted. The complaint was against a particular officer and his room was searched by the CBI. Let's get that very, very clear. Number two, on the postings of officers, 
all postings of officers in the super time scale must come to the lieutenant governor must the tradition was before 94 or after 90 this has been after 94 prior to 94 everything used to come but there was an agreement between the lieutenant governor and chief minister that only super time scale will come however in the last one and a half year out of peak this government started sending including danix to me which we have cleared and i think that given the circumstances all postings and transfers of class one officers will indeed have to come to the lieutenant governor that is the law if you were to meet arvind kejriwal tomorrow what would your advice to him on following the constitution be i would say read the constitution well follow the constitution we will help you to get where you want to but, but he doesn't want your help he wants to run it the way he wants to run it that's his problem because he's a union territory he will have to get 280 MPs in uh, the Lok Sabha and a large number in the Rajya Sabha to change the constitution. On that note, I'd like to thank you, uh, LG Najib Jung, speaking fairly and frankly to us. Uh, we do hope we'll see a better relationship going on between the lieutenant governors and the chief minister's office from here on. But the last word on this entire issue is still to be said because after his Vipassana tour, we do hope Arvind Kejriwal will make a comment and we'll come back and ask you questions Thank on that. Thank you very much for joining Thank us, you. Mr. Jha. Thank you.